In today's video, we're going to be breaking down 10 of the best champions for Season 14 that are not only super strong, but also extremely easy to pick up, which in turn will help you climb the ranked ladder at an incredible rate. Also, we're excited to announce we've done a massive update, adding all brand new courses for Season 14 on our website, skillcap.com. And if that's not enough, we upload 10 new Smurf commentaries every week where a challenger teaches you how to play every champion in the exact rank you're stuck in. The best part? You can try all this out completely risk-free. If you don't rank up while actively using skill cap, you get your money back, no questions asked. So what are you waiting for? Click the link in the description below to get the rank you've always wanted in Season 14. The best top lane champion that you can play to accelerate your ranked climb is Trundle. What makes Trundle so great is his ability to not only smash lane, but also become an incredibly oppressive threat in the side lane. With Trundle's Q, he's able to reduce the enemy's AD while granting himself bonus AD, so it just makes his early skirmish insanely lethal. Looking for that level 2 all-in is something that can really boost you out of the lower ranks with Trundle super fast. Remember, you gotta kill the first full wave and then one melee minion on the second wave to hit level 2. This is something you should be laser focused on with Trundle, and if you end up hitting level 2 before the enemy, popping Ghost and looking for first blood is the play. Since you'll already have the movement speed from Ghost, make sure to level up your E at level 2 to prevent the enemy from escaping. Ghost with Teleport should be your summoner spell combination with Trundle top lane. As you reach the later stages of the game with Trundle, it's all about exerting as much pressure as possible in the side lane. Really focus on where your team is positioned on the map, and you use that information to help you decide if you should hard commit to pressuring towers. For example, a big mistake a lot of players make when split pushing is that they will shove up too far when their entire team is in base. You want to make sure that if you are drawing pressure in the side lane, that your team is on the map to capitalize elsewhere if the enemy team comes for you. Dying in the side lane can actually be a positive as long as your team is in position to take a tower elsewhere or secure Baron. The standard core build that you should be running on Trundle consists of a Trinity Force Rush into Ravenous Hydra 2nd and Hullbreaker 3rd. Roll with Lethal Tempo for the Keystone Rune, followed by Triumph. Alacrity and Last Stand, Demolish and Bone Plating are the optimal secondaries. One of the best and easiest top laners that you can play for Season 14 is Mordekaiser. Mordekaiser has been loving the Season 14 item adjustments as the reworked Leandries and Riftmaker are now so much better for him. In Season 13, Mordekaiser could not even run Leandries because it had mana, but now that the item provides health and AP, it's perfect for Mord. Champions that can get really tanky but still output considerable damage are always great if you're newer to the game or are just looking to play top lane for the first time. Mord is also one of those champions that has a very simple win condition to play around, being his ultimate's cooldown. Few champions can outduel Mord when he has R available, so playing off that spike is something you should be cognizant of at all times. Mord's R also makes it so that no matter how ahead or behind you are, you're always able to make an impact in team fights. If the enemy has a fed assassin that is trying to get to your fed ADC, you could be 0 out of 10 as Mord, but you just sit on your ADC, press R on whoever tries to dive on them, and your job is done. To learn more about Mordekaiser, Hector has a brand new full game commentary for the champion on our website, which is just one of the 10 brand new commentaries we upload every single week. The optimal core build for Mordekaiser revolves around a Rylai's Rush into Riftmaker 2nd and Leandry's 3rd, Conqueror is the Keystone Room with Triumph, Tenacity, and Last Stand, followed by Bone Plating and Revitalize for secondaries. When you're trying to learn jungle as a beginner, picking a champion that has a more linear playstyle will help you climb a lot faster, which is why we have Nocturne as our first recommendation. Full clearing with Nocturne and hitting level 6 as soon as possible is a very simple game plan you can look to execute on. Once you hit level 6, you should already have a general idea of what lane you want to gank based on the gank setup that your lanes provide. Whichever lane provides the most crowd control to help follow up on your gank is oftentimes the best lane to prioritize your R for. Now, not only is Nocturne's game plan very simple, but the Season 14 item rework has been huge for him. Experimental Hexplate is the rush item for Nocturne, and it makes his ability to capitalize on alt plays so much better. That burst of movement speed you get from the Hexplate passive after using your R helps Nocturne stick onto his targets super easily, and there's almost no counterplay for the enemy to escape once you've locked onto them. The 30 ultimate ability hate from Hexplate is game changer for Nocturne as well, since he's so reliant on the spell to be most impactful. The best rune page for Nocturne is Lethal Tempo with Triumph, Alacrity, and Coup de Gras. Eyeball Collection and Ultimate Hunter are the way to go for secondaries. If you want to play a jungler who can be more proactive in the early game with stronger gank power, Warwick is a phenomenal option. Warwick has always been a great beginner jungler, but he's got even better for Season 14 since he can abuse two of the most broken bruiser items. You rush Titanic Hydra on Warwick and then go into Sundered Sky second for a really nasty two-item spike. There's just so much dirt durability and damage coming out of this build, which makes it the perfect setup for beginner junglers, as you have more margin for error but are still a massive damage threat. Executing ganks properly is one thing that may take you a bit of time to get used to on Warwick, as how you choose to use Q and E can heavily dictate whether you score a kill or not. Oftentimes, you want to lead with your E and try to fear the enemy away from their tower while saving Q for if the enemy flashes away or uses a dash. It's impossible for us to go into every detail about ganking in this video, so if you really want to take your ganking to another level in Season 14, we have a brand new course 
course dedicated to the topic on our website. The rune page that you should be running on Warwick is Lethal Tempo with Triumph, Alacrity, and Last Stand. Best secondaries are Celerity and Water Walking. The easiest and strongest mid laner that you can play for Season 14 is Malzahar. With Malzahar, it's all about getting past the first few levels and hitting your spikes of Lost Chapter and Level 6. To do this, you're going to want to start the game off with a Mana Crystal and Refillable Potion. You also want to take Teleport for your secondary summoner spell. This way you can cheat your Lost Chapter purchase much faster and teleport right back to lane as soon as you have it. It's so easy for Malzahar to begin perma pushing waves once he has Lost Chapter completed, as prior to then, he does struggle with mana issues. For the first few levels, you only want to be poking with Malz when you have your Mana Flow Band proc available. A lot of new Malz players will make the mistake of spamming out Q for early poke, but the spell just costs too much mana for it to be spammed early on. New itemization has been amazing for Malz this season, as the strength of his ultimate has become even greater. New item Malignance works perfectly for Malzahar's ultimate because you benefit immensely from Malignance's burn damage while your ultimate is running. The rune page for Malzahar consists of Airy with Mana Flow, Transcendence, and Scorch, Grab Magical Footwear, and Cosmic Insight for secondaries. Our challenger mid laner Shori is really high on Swain for Season 14, and he's our second mid lane selection for beginners. Very similar to Malzahar, Swain can abuse Malignance to its fullest potential due to his ultimate lasting for a very long duration. You're able to get multiple procs of the Malignance passive off in a fight, which gives it such high value on Swain. Itemization aside, Swain as a champion in general is just so great for newer mid laners because of his more forgiving playstyle. In mid lane, you see a lot of squishy champions played, whether it be mages or assassins, but Swain fits into this niche of being a battle mage, which allows you to be more impactful without requiring as much skill. One small positioning error with a traditional mage, and you're just one shot, but with Swain's more durable build, he doesn't get punished as hard for every little mistake. Swain does struggle a bit more in lane compared to a lot of mid lane champions, but he spikes very hard on that Malignance completion. Malignance completed with ultimate available is when you should be looking to press the issue. Once you get enough experience on Swain and understand his limits, your 1v2 potential is quite good as well, which gives him a lot of pressure after he has that Malignance. To learn more about Swain, Shori has a new Season 14 commentary for the champion on our website, and he uploads two new mid lane commentaries every single week. The complete core build for Swain consists of a Malignance Rush into Leandri's second and Rylai's third, Conqueror is the keystone rune with presence of mind, tenacity, and last stand, followed by conditioning and overgrowth for secondaries. If you're new to ADC, one of the better champs to help you learn the role, who's also super strong for Season 14, is Jinx. Jinx is one of the better crit ADCs right now in a meta where lethality ADCs have been so dominant. Jinx's kit works really well for the chaotic nature of solo queue because her resets from passive can solo win you late game fights. After you get a passive proc with Jinx, it takes very little skill to right click and zoom around with all the added movement speed and attack speed you get. You don't even need to land W or R, just using the long range from fish bones and movement speed from passive will keep you really safe and allow you to output incredible damage. Jinx has some of the best follow up for any ADC in the game with her W and E, so it's imperative you're playing beside your support in lane. For example, if your support is sitting in the bottom side of the lane but you're sitting closer to the river, it's going to be way more difficult for you to follow with E if your teammate lands their CC spell. Playing closer beside your support is something you really want to focus on with Jinx, as it can help you capitalize on catch plays much easier. The standard core build for Jinx is a Kraken Slayer Rush into Infinity Edge second and Rapid Fire Cannon third. Pick up Lethal Tempo with Presence of Mind, Bloodline, and Coup de Gras for primary runes. Absolute Focus and Gathering Storm are the best secondaries. The number one priority ADC that you should be playing regardless of whether you're a beginner or not is Misfortune. MF is a monster of a pick for all ELO brackets in Season 14, as her ability to abuse lethality items has put her on top. Considering Misfortune is also very easy to learn, you really don't need a ton of experience in the champion to begin hard carrying games. Focus point with Misfortune should be your ultimate's cooldown. Getting used to pinging out your ultimate's cooldown and doing your best to only fight when it's up will help you be very consistent on the pick. Our challenger player Hector has been uploading a ton of new full game commentaries to our website for Season 14, and he's got a new one for Misfortune that can really help you out. A standard build for MF consists of a Ghostblade Rush into the Collector 2nd and Edge of Night 3rd. First Strike is the best Keystone Rune with Free Boots, Biscuits, and Cosmic Insight. Run Absolute Focus and Gathering Storm for secondaries. One of the best pure carry supports that you can play if you're a beginner is Zyra. Despite Zyra having as few skill shots in her kit, she's really not that difficult to be effective on. Just using W with Q in teamfights offers so much zone, and Zyra's ultimate around Baron or Dragon is absolutely game-changing in grouped up fights. In lane with Zyra, you really want to focus on poking with Q whenever the enemy ADC is going for a last hit. This is vital to your success on Zyra, as a lot of new players will just randomly throw out Q and E whenever, but timing skill shots for when the enemy is last hitting will give you a much higher hit rate. Especially if you're looking for a catch with E, playing around cannon waves is huge. The enemy ADC won't want to give up that cannon minion, so when they go for that last hit and are forced into a fixed position, lining up E becomes way easier. The fact that Leandries now provides you with health for Season 14 makes Zyra more forgiving for newer players. With the old Season 13 Leandries, it offered no health at all, which made it very easy for enemies to pick off Zyra and one-shot her. Now that Leandries has 
300 health, your survivability is greater, which allows you to play more aggressive and not be punished as hard as before. The core build you should be looking to run consists of Leandri's Rush and Darylai's second and Zanya's third. Best rune page is Comet with Mana Flow, Transcendence, and Scorch. Taste of Blood and Relentless Hunter are the optimal secondaries. If we had to choose one support to recommend for beginners in Season 14, there's nobody better than Maokai. Melee supports in general are really great right now, but Maokai is on a whole nother level due to his incredible synergy with the new Trailblazer support item. Point and click hard CC is so powerful for solo queue because it's near guaranteed impact with very little skill involved. This is the case with Maokai W as his gank assist and engage power is just so consistent compared to other supports. If you have flash up with Maokai and your jungler is ganking, there's really no way that you should not come out of the play with a kill. Flash W into the knockback from Q should guarantee a kill every single time. Just getting really good at consistently executing this combo when your jungler is ganking will allow you to influence games so easily with Maokai. Speaking of consistency, if you're serious about improving at support throughout Season 14, our weekly commentaries are a really great source to help you out, and we've got a new one for Maokai that has just been uploaded. The optimal core build for Maokai in Season 14 revolves around a Trailblazer Rush into Locket 2nd and Knight's Vow 3rd. Grab Aftershock for the Keystone Rune with Font of Life, Bone Plating, and Unflinching, followed by Biscuits and Cosmic Insight for secondaries. If you truly want to improve and rank up fast, head on over to skillcap.com. We just finished a massive update adding all brand new courses for Season 14. We even upload 10 new Smurf commentaries each week where a challenger teaches you how to play every champion in the exact rank you're stuck in. And remember, you can try all this out risk-free. If you don't rank up while actively using Skillcap, you get your money back, no questions asked. So what are you waiting for? Click the link in the description below to get the rank you've always wanted this season. So that's going to wrap up everything for our Season 14 update on the best and easiest champions for beginners. Thanks so much for watching, everyone. Good luck with your rank climbs, and we'll see you in the next video.